to the or umbrella podcast how's my how's my new intro there that was extremely energetic i don't know if i was ready for that but that was that was nice i i if anything i am energetic so uh so yeah today we got a very special guest um i discovered sydney from uh there's this video series that you did uh what was, did you start like five six years ago with mixtape Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that started in 2015, so about five years ago. Yeah, and I discovered that, and I had, like, the notification button. I was watching every video. I've always been a big NBA fan, and so I was watching all the top ten lists and all the, you know, all the all the Dirk Nowitzki love, even though, you know, as a Rockets <laughs> fan, it was a little rough uh, for me. Hey, I, but- I gave love to Hakeem, though. I think I made a video about how underrated yeah. Hakeem Olajuwon is, so I, I gave you that. I, you know, I... When I found out I was going to get to interview you, I looked at your uh, video of the top 10 NBA players of all time, and you oh, put yeah. Hakeem number three. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was, it was one of the greatest moments of my week. I'm like, yes, yes. Well, I mean, and like most people consider him to be an all-time great, but even then, I think he's underrated. Like, I legit think he's third. I mean, maybe LeBron has moved up. That was like five years ago. So I don't know. Maybe Hakeem is a little lower. But yeah, I think he's one of the most underrated all-time greats of all time. Oh, Absolutely. Uh, Sydney also uh, now does the uh, the Dallas Hoops fancast. Am I getting that right? Yeah, Dallas Hoops fancast is the podcast, and our site is DallasHoopsCast.com. All right, I got that in my notes, but I haven't gotten there yet. So there we okay, go. Cool. I won't so, jump ahead. There we go. So we're really excited to have Sydney. Sydney is. Um, an encyclopedia of NBA knowledge, especially Mavs knowledge. Uh, she has a weekly, uh, is it weekly or a pretty often podcast, especially during the season of the yeah, Dallas during, Mavericks. Uh, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, during the season, it's pretty much weekly. And then during the summer, it's like pretty much whenever we just want to. It's a fan cast, so it kind of just ebbs and flows with the emotions of being a fan. Absolutely. But we are really excited to have Sydney and we'll get to know her uh, here in a little bit with some questions. First of all, we just want to welcome you on the Order Brother podcast. Thank you for having me. I mean, thank you for being on here. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. This is, uh, this is pretty cool. I think this is, this is the first one I've done with video on. So I was like, wow, I have to get all ready for a camera and stuff. I'm not used to that. Like usually with a podcast, you can just wear whatever, but it's like, I have to look good now. I get it. Exactly. Not everyone can be as naturally beautiful as me. It's understandable. Um, <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because when guys think like, yeah, we'll just do it on camera. You know, guys can put on a t-shirt and a baseball cap or something. But with women, it's like, okay, on camera, let me get my makeup and everything done. It's a big exactly. deal for us. But I, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Thanks for asking me to be on. Absolutely. So uh, before we get started off with the question, I just wanted to give you a, a forum, a platform, a moment <laughs> for you to shine in the sun to talk about. So if anybody's watching basketball, it is no secret that uh, from the heavens of basketball lore uh, came a man from uh, one of them European countries. And um, he took the NBA by storm. And now he's just putting up like video game numbers all the time. I just want to give you the platform just to, just to praise and to tell us about the greatness of Luka Doncic. I mean, It's just the crazy thing about it is that he's so good and he plays for our team. I think that's one of the coolest things as a fan when you have that guy on your team because you can be a fan of LeBron or Giannis or, you know, James Harden, whoever, but when that guy is actually on your team, you kind of feel like that sense of pride, like you somehow have something to do with his greatness, even though you totally don't. So that's that makes it even more fun to watch Luca. Um, obviously, like winning Rookie of the Year, he had a great rookie season, set records, broke records. But this year, like took it to another level. And I think going into the playoffs, we were all kind of 
we had this idea of playoff Luca. Like, what would playoff Luca be like? Um, just from knowing his history of of Euro League and his history in the playoffs there, winning those championships, winning tournament MVP, we kind of had an idea of like playoff Luca might be something special. And man, like it was. Like it was so much better than I thought it would be. Obviously, everybody knows the buzzer beater that he hit. Um, and I mean, they, they got eliminated, but he still had some amazing moments and the stats that he put up and actually contributing two wins, like not empty stats, having that time without Kristaps and still winning games. I mean, he was just so good. Like, I think people appreciate that he's the future of the NBA and it's nice to, it's nice to have that, like to not have to battle with him not getting the appreciation that he respects. It's just, it's awesome to see like ESPN talking about him and Bleacher Report. It's so it's fun to watch him. It is just so much cooler that he's actually on our team. I I love that. Absolutely. And since we we just had on my podcast um, somebody praising a Mavericks player for uh, a, a long period of time, I I <laughs> did I, I, I go prepared... too long? Sorry. No, I'm I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> this, uh, is, this, I... is, this is all set up. This is. <laughs> yes, this is a setup because I, all week I've been preparing a, a song for a Rockets player um, before we get started with more Mavs talk. So, all right, um, let's get ready. This is a tribute okay. to, uh, what, uh, you know, a, a similar thing because anytime you have a player that's drafted and he's young and you get to watch him grow and you get to watch him play, you know, I had that. I was, I, I'm not sure if I was born. I was like, uh, okay, so I was one year old when Hakeem Olajuwon got drafted. But okay. I was there for Yao Ming. And so um, to all my listeners, before we get started with the Sydney interview, I just wanted to take a pause to sing this very quick song that I wrote about Yao Ming. All right, let's go. Me, 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 me. Okay. You once, twice, <laughs> you three times, Yao Ming. You came into our hearts and you had so many injuries but the memories oh the memories yeah mean you gave us memories and even though you left so soon we'll always remember you I, I i wish i had an app on my phone that's like a, a lighter so that i could <laughs> i could play it i don't know if people still do that but it was worthy of that. That was that I, was beautiful. Not, I think they not as good as the Hallelujah song, but yeah, it was it was okay. It was all right. All right. Okay, uh, Michael, you, you want to keep trying? For... You have to keep trying, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah. I'll get there. All right, Michael, you want to start us off with the first question? Sure. Uh, we always like to start off the Or Umbrella podcast with a weird question because, as you can tell, we're a little bit weird. So. <laughs> So who would win in a tag team dance off? Luca and Boban or Dirk and Sean Bradley? So okay, I think that Luca probably has some moves. I mean, he's young and hip and cool and all that, I guess. I don't know. I feel like he probably has some moves. Boban, I think, probably secretly has some moves. I mean, probably not the most graceful dancer, but I think he could bust some moves. Dirk, on the other hand, I don't think P has any moves. If he did, they would be like dad moves. He would be like that scene in um in Hitch with Will Smith and I think Kevin Smith. Yeah. And like that he's trying to teach him how to dance and he's like, This is where you live. Arm at a ninety degree angle, snapping with the beat and just shuffling side to side. Like that's you. That's where you live. I feel like Dirk would kind of be like that. And then Sean Bradley, I no way. I mean, there's there's no way he has any moves, dance or otherwise. And so I'm definitely going to give it to Luca and Boban. I don't I don't think it'd be pretty either way. I mean, I, I don't know if Boban is like the best dancer, but I feel like Luca Luca as usual would carry it. Like he would just carry the whole team on his back. I think I'd I'd go with Luca and Boban. I think that's I think that's a good choice, and that would be yeah. that would be a beautiful thing to see as well. Um, uh, all right, the I don't next know if it'd be beautiful, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's not the word. It would be quite yeah. the train wreck. Yeah. All right, let's 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 talk about you. Uh, your fandom of the Mavericks and basketball in general is most definitely massive. Uh, what initially got you into basketball, and who were some of your favorite players growing up? 
Man, I loved basketball ever since I can remember. So basically ever since I heard of it, um, I loved playing basketball as a kid. I didn't actually watch basketball growing up and I don't know why I just enjoyed playing it. Um, I would like, I begged my parents to get me a basketball hoop and before they got me one, since I didn't have one, I had a basketball and I would use the roof of our house as like the basket. And so I would shoot the ball up onto the roof and then it would roll back down and I'd catch it. Then I shoot it again and it rolled back down. And I drove my dad nuts mm -hmm. while he was trying to take a nap. I think that's why he eventually bought me a basketball hoop. So yeah, I've always loved playing it. And then I started really watching it um, probably around like 2009, I think, because um, Martin, who's my co-host on Dallas Hoops FanCast, we're married and we started dating around like 2009 or so, um, or maybe 2008. And so that's, you know, since we were dating, he's a Mavs fan. So obviously I started watching the Mavs. Um, and so, yeah, and then obviously I just fell in love with him because that was at a really good period. Like they had Dirk, he was in his prime. A couple of years later, they won a championship. And then since then, like I've gone back and, and learned the history of the Mavs and the NBA. So I've gotten really into it. But yeah, I've just, I've just always loved it. I don't know why. It's just, I don't know, fascinating and playing it was just the most fun thing ever. Most definitely. Michael, you got next? Yes. Uh, mixtape videos blew up seemingly overnight to the point where many videos were getting millions of views. Millions. I mean, that's hard to wrap your mind around. So we wanted to ask a few questions about that channel. And the first one is, how did the idea come about? You know, honestly, it started because one night I got bored and I decided to make a um, highlights video montage of Dirk, like his career highlights. And um, after I finished it, I was like, this is pretty good. So I wanted to share it somewhere and like YouTube seemed like the obvious choice. And um, so I created a channel because I didn't want to share it on my personal channel. Mm -hmm. um, so I created the channel and I just gave it a name. And then, yeah, people just started watching it. And so I started making other videos. Um, and then it just, it just grew from there. Like, I never really intended it to be anything, really, or to make more than the first video. Um, but I think, I guess people just really liked it. Or it was kind of a, a different style. Like, back then, there weren't a ton of NBA channels like there are today. Today, there's just so many of them but back then there there weren't as many so i think people just really wanted that kind of content but yeah it was uh it was really just because i got bored one day it was kind of an accident actually that is so yeah. cool happy <laughs> accident. very happy accident for yeah sure. yeah yeah um so uh i guess to kind of answer this question uh so you were surprised by obviously surprised by the success of the channel at what point did you realize that you had a, a really big following? I don't know. I mean, I guess I approached it the whole time as just being surprised with whatever happened. Like, however many views I got or subscribers, um, I just saw it as people enjoyed watching the videos. But, but more, not like they enjoyed watching my videos, but just they enjoyed that discussion. Like, I would bring up a topic and share information on it and they liked talking about it so um i don't know probably by the time i got to like 40 50 000 subscribers i was like this is pretty cool like i should see if i can get to a hundred thousand but yeah the the whole time it was it was a complete surprise absolutely so how did you come up with ideas of different videos what was your inspiration i mean really it was just topics that I wanted to learn about. And that was the thing, like, I didn't approach it as I have something to say about this. Like, I want to share my opinion and, and share why this is right and, and, you know, people should believe this. But it really just started with a question that I wanted to answer. Like, I wanted to know who are the most underrated defenders or is Kobe better than LeBron or who are the greatest players of all time? Or, you know, just these different questions that I would think of that I wanted to know the answer to. So I would do the research and find the answer. And then I would just share what I found. It was never like, I never went into it wanting to prove something. Cause I felt like 
when you already have an idea, it, it sort of skews everything that you see from that point on. Um, so yeah, it was really just, you know, things I wanted to know, like, you know, who was greater or comparing two players or what if this happened? Um, and then I would just research it and, and make the video from there. All right. So I, I got a little bit of a, of a curveball question. I mean, not, not a curveball, but it's not, <laughs> it's not something that we've prepared beforehand. So okay. kind of listening, kind of listening to you. So like, for me, I, I love researching old players. Like one of my, one of my friends uh, messes with me because, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a sports group on Facebook that um, I'm like one of the only white guys. And when people will, uh, when people bring up like the greatest, like forwards of all time, I remember one time I gave this big spiel about like Bob Pettit and everybody's like, man, what, what you bringing that white boy up for? Like <laughs> who's Bob Pettit? And, like I was bringing up like Dolph Shays and, uh, Dave DeBusher and Jerry Lucas. And I mean, I brought up the other guys like Maurice Stokes and, um, you know, Walt Bellamy and like, you know, talking about big men, you know, I just love to dig deep uh, mm -hmm. into who nobody has ever heard of and, and just know the story and the history and, you know, uh, who, you know, where we got to where we got uh, and, and stuff like that. Um, so going into like, you know, top 10 power forwards of all time was a video I watched a couple of days ago, kind of getting ready for this, this interview uh, that you made. And, uh, you know, you mentioned, I think Dolph Shays and Bob Pettit, like mm -hmm. going into that video, you're saying like, you never really heard of these guys. How do you go about like researching people um, that you really aren't familiar with? Yeah. I mean, Dolph Shays also, yeah, it doesn't get enough recognition. He was really like one of the first stretch fours you could say where he was shooting from the outside you know quote unquote the outside um but yeah when i went into videos like that um i relied heavily on basketballreference.com as everybody does and i started with parameters of what i thought would be like great players um so maybe for big men it would be like rebounds blocks i would look at advanced stats if they were available um all-star award not necessarily all-star appearances because i think that's a little bit overrated in terms of greatness because it's all about fan votes but you know uh, first team all nba different accolades like that um and then i would just get like the top 50 guys of total rebounds all time or top 50 guys of total blocks or top 50 guys of blocks per game or, or whatever the stat was that i thought would represent a great player um and then I would just I would just look at the numbers and whatever the numbers said, that was it. Like if this guy was top 10 in five different categories that I valued for that particular position, then he was going to be a top 10 player. And if I had never heard of him, I would be like, man, this dude, he was amazing. Like, what was he like? So I'd go back and, and watch footage. Sometimes, you know, there was more or less available. But yeah, I just looked at the numbers and what, whatever the numbers said, that was it. I didn't. I didn't want like my own personal opinion to influence it because again, I'm just trying to learn it. Like I'm not trying to prove anything. I just wanted to know, you know, what the data really said. Absolutely. Michael, you got the next question, bud. Yeah. Uh, we know you're no longer a part of, of that channel um, as, as, as successful as it was. So what made you decide to walk away? You know, I learned a lot from growing that channel it, it's like YouTube, I think, is not always taken seriously as a like a job or a career path, but you really do learn a lot, um, particularly about marketing and digital marketing, because that's really what you're doing. You're creating content, but it's about um, SEO, branding, uh, creating that video content, building an audience, social media marketing, um, all of those things, those are basic fundamentals of digital marketing. And so I was able to take everything I learned there and put it to use in a digital marketing career. And so that's what I did. I basically just jumped from that into digital marketing, which is what I do now. That's my, that's my full-time job. And so it was a lot of fun and I learned a whole lot and then I was able to, to take it into, into a real career. So it ended up working out really well for me. I think a lot of people don't realize how it can really boost you in your job like that, but it totally can. I mean, that's what I did. Very cool. Very cool. And I imagine at some point you have to make that choice. Like, am I going to get this job or am I going to spend? Cause I mean, those videos were so, I, I'd imagine they were super time consuming. And yeah, I, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. 
I, I made about one video a week and it would take me the whole week to make it um, mostly because I did everything. Like I would start with a topic and then I would do the research and then I would write the script, record it, and then put together the video, which in itself was getting the footage and the photos and all that. So yeah, they were pretty time consuming. And I mean, you do, you make money off of that content on YouTube. Um, but obviously I make a lot more as now a digital marketer doing basically the same thing. Understandable. Understandable. Absolutely. Um, so now I didn't realize this. Now you're, you and your husband, cause I, I know, I know your co-host, that's your husband. That is so cool yeah. because you know, I've done, uh, I actually did a couple of, you know, me and, my, me and my wife love watching basketball together. And uh, we just celebrated our eight year anniversary uh, Monday. And so uh, we've done like basketball videos together and we talk about it all the time. And it's such a cool thing to share. Uh, anytime you have um, something that you're passionate about and your spouse is passionate about, that's, that's an amazing thing. Let's, so let's talk about, um, the, the website, DallasHoopsCast.com, and also the Dallas Hoops FanCast, both dedicated to the Dallas Mavericks. Um, <laughs> both dedicated to the Dallas Mavericks. Uh, talk about those entities and how they kind of both came to be. Yeah, so Dallas Hoops FanCast, the podcast, launched in January of, I think, 2019. So that was just last year, a little over a year ago. Um, and at the time there were there were i don't want to say several mavs podcasts there were other mavs podcasts not nearly as many as there are today today there's just a ton of them um but there were some back then and there were some really good ones um but we felt like there was kind of a little space open that we could fill there were some podcasts that were really good at this thing and some were really good at this thing or really good at this thing and we thought there was a little niche there that we wanted to fill of just that raw honest fan emotion that i think sometimes took it too far but so we launched that and then dallashoopscast.com was just launched last november or december so not even a year old it's still pretty new um and that's like it's my you know i, I work full time and so then on the side i i work on that and uh, it's not a it's not a news site at all because there's so many great mavericks news sites that can keep up with that like ever churning news cycle and pump out like amazing content every day and there's no way that i would be able to beat them on that so we really focus on um first of all the the visual experience of just creating an awesome experience for mavs fans but also going into the depth of a topic um and so it's things like everything you would ever want to know about Michael Kidd Gilchrist, who the Mavs picked up this season. And I think he played a total of like five minutes the entire season. But if you want to know anything about Michael Kidd Gilchrist, there's like a 1500 word article where you can read all about him or Dorian Finney-Smith, who grew into a really important role player this year. You, there's an article where just anything you would want to know about him, it's there. Or Kristaps Porzingis, his ACL injury, what can we expect, you know, digging into the data? So it's that kind of like deep, in-depth coverage that we really focus on. And again, just also the the experience of creating really quality content. So it's not for everyone, but I mean, if that's what you're into, if you want that kind of deep analysis, that's what DallasHoopsCast.com is for. Absolutely. And to all uh, seven of the diehard Michael Kidd Gilchrist fans out there, <laughs> you got something to chew on there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. It's it's all there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I, I do it for the fans, you know, obviously. I'm not going to spend a week on a player like that if I didn't care. So now they know that I care about them. So, Sydney, I, I back in when we were really into the Rockets, me and Jonathan, Jonathan's still 100%, but we would watch every game. We would watch it with my dad. I mean, this was this was right around championships, you know, back-to-back -back mm -hmm. championships they had. And my favorite player of the time, next to Akeem Olajuwon, of course, was Scotty Brooks. Oh, <laughs> wow. I Scotty didn't, Brooks I, was. Yeah, I didn't even know he played for the Rockets. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. And, and yeah, uh, 
he he had a long career, but he, I loved him. He, and he was he was such a great three point player. He would just go in and he would just shoot three points, and they would just throw him. <laughs> and he was like a wild man, just throwing three. He could he could nice. change him so quickly. But I love Scotty Brooks. And and if back in the day, if I could have heard uh, somebody talk about Scotty Brooks for half an hour, it would have made my my, week, <laughs> my month my year. I mean, it would have been so amazing. Mm. So I love that y'all really get into the, the minutia and you don't just focus on the big players. You focus on the whole team and, and all the aspects that maybe some of these other podcasts leave out and don't really talk about as much. So I appreciate that because I think when you are a, a voracious diehard fan of the Mavericks, of any, of any team, then that's the kind of stuff you're into. You want to talk mm -hmm. about your team all day. So yeah. I think that's wonderful that, that you know, you, you focus on a player that maybe doesn't get the limelight very much, but people want to know about. So I think that's great. Yeah, I think you're right, too, that when you're a fan, you can't get enough content. So it's like, I don't really worry about that there's, you know, 20 other Mavs blogs. It's like when they win a game, I'm reading every single article. I don't care if it's on a Golden State Warriors blog, like whatever it is, I'm going to read it. So we're just another outlet for people to get that kind of content. It's great. Absolutely. All right. Let's talk a little bit about the, the history of the NBA. Michael threw me off with that minutia. Is that like that <laughs> stuff that they eat in Mexico? Menudo? <laughs> That's minudo. Yeah. Minutia is, is tiny. Yes. That's exactly what it is. That's that's exactly what it is. Sorry, my, my vocabulary just went whoop, whoop. You know, that, that, <laughs> I was talking about Scotty Brooks. I couldn't help it, you know? <laughs> all right. Well, let's not get into Chuck Hayes because we'll be here all day. That was my guy. Um, but uh, let's, let, let's do a little bit of top five list. Uh, since you're – we're so good with the lists um, <laughs> with, with mixtape videos uh, – Here's one since my favorite player of all time, Hakeem Olajuwon, and one of your favorite players of all time, Dirk Nowitzki, are known for their fadeaway jumpers. You know, uh, Dirk had the one off one leg and Hakeem had the dream shake, of course. Uh, yeah. Top five players with the best fadeaway jumpers. Okay, so I don't even know if anyone else needs to be mentioned for that list aside from – Jordan, obviously, Kobe, because he copied him. And then, yeah, Dirk. I mean, with Dirk, it was more of like a post, but, you know, it's all a jump shot. So, yeah, Dirk, his is unstoppable, and he hit it at such a high rate. So it's got to be up there. And then, yeah, Jordan, Kobe. And outside of that, I feel like they're all just kind of copying them anyways. So I would put those in the top three and, like, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's the same way I do power forwards. Like, it's Duncan, Dirk, and Carl Malone, and then everybody else. Like, it's not even worth doing, like, a top five or ten. So, I, I would say the same thing for, for, the, for the fadeaway. Those would be my three. How dare you? How dare you <laughs> exclude Hakeem Olajuwon? <laughs> you know, when I think of the dream shake, I just – I guess it was so intricate and the fadeaway is like a pretty simple move. So, I mean, you could, I could see you putting it in there, but I would, I would still stick with the three. That's fair. All right. All right. Well, well, no, it's not. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> also, I want to give an honorable mention. Uh, who was it? Elvin Hayes back in the day. That dude. Mm -hmm. And Will, Will had a really good fadeaway too. Well, yeah. Uh, Will could do anything. So. That's true. That's yeah. true. He's like, I'm just going to lead the league in assist one season. Did you see know. that video where he hit, um, I think it was a hook shot from the three-point line. He hit like five in a row. It was actually, I it was in a practice. It wasn't during a game, um, but they were just doing like a shoot around. And one of his teammates, like, I can't remember who, um, he had hit a couple in a row and he bet him like 20 bucks that he couldn't hit another one. And he hit another one. And, he, and yeah, and it was a, it was a hook shot from the three-point line swished it like three or four in a row is crazy he, he could do whatever just anything absolutely yeah. anything um so uh what's the next one michael our top five uh top five favorite nicknames in nba history favorite nicknames man that, that's a tough one you know i think because i don't know if any 
Mavs player has had like a truly good nickname aside from Jason Terry, who's the Jet. But like Dirk, I don't think had great nicknames because he's just Dirk. Like he's just that good. So it would be hard for me to pick a great nickname for any other player that wasn't a Maverick. Um, but I mean, probably Black Mamba is up there. A lot of the ones today, I don't know, like the Sh- Chef Curry, who also Harden somehow gets that nickname too. It, today, I feel like there's not any really good nicknames. The only one I could think of would be Black Mamba. Because I, I, like in Mavs players, didn't really have any good nicknames either that I can think of, at least. I got one for you. Okay. Brian Cardinal, the custodian. The custodian, the janitor. Yeah, I mean, I guess that counts. I was thinking of all-time greats, but you know what? I forgot about him. On the same lines, you could go with, like, Ryan Brokoff, who was here and sometimes played. He was called the accountant. So maybe maybe those are some good nicknames, yeah. That's, that's, that's a good point, actually. My favorite random Rockets nickname, and this is a guy nobody has ever heard of, uh, he his name was Thomas Hamilton, and he I don't even think he made the roster. But uh, Calvin Murphy, who you know was the Rockets announcer for many years and was just an, another all time great player as well. Uh, there was this guy who was just super overweight, but he was good, and apparently he had attitude problems. But they cut him. And uh, Calvin Murphy nicknamed him two sandwiches because he's like, everybody else goes to the buffet and gets one sandwich, but this guy, he gets two sandwiches. <laughs> wow. So his, his nickname was two sandwiches. And, like, wow. that's all any Rockets player could talk about at the time was the dude who was nicknamed two sandwiches. So, that's so a good random. nickname. It really is. But, you know, yeah. you, you know how it is. Just There's just some people on your team, they pass through and you're like, hey, I remember him while no other fan base does. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah. Well, that's that's true, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so the next one, um, the top five most frustrating players in Mavericks history. Man, I feel like you could pick a player from the past five years just, and it would make this list. Like, you don't even have to go that far back. Um, <laughs> because, and I don't know if every team is like this, where it seems like every year there's a guy that's just, so frustrating. Um, mm. The first one that I thought of was Roddy B. And not like frustrating from like that he was lazy or a bad teammate or whatever, but the potential, I think. It was frustrating to not be able to see him reach his potential because, man, he was just so buttery smooth as a scorer. Um, he could, I felt like he could score at will. Like the way he could snake through the defense and get a shot at the rim, his jump shot was butter. I mean, it was just so smooth, the form and his release. Um, he actually set the record for most points by a rookie in a game his rookie year. I think he scored like 40 or more than 40 against the Golden State Warriors. Um, and he just had this skill. I mean, it was just so easy for him, but he was kind of small. Um, also his frame was small, like aside from being a kind of shorter, he wasn't, didn't have a big body injury problems, probably because of his body. And then also he just, I don't think he had the heart. Like, mm-hmm. I think he just didn't have that like fiery competitiveness in him. You just never saw that. I think he just happened to be good at basketball, but yeah, yeah. he, um, he just never really reached his potential. So I would say that one. Um, and then probably, I think Rajon Rondo. No, no, no. You know what? I would put Lamar Odom second because it was an entire season. Um, yeah, the yeah the Mavs had him. I forgot Trust about me. that. We try to forget about it too. Okay. Yeah, that was that was the year after they won their championship. They got him from the Lakers, um, and he just he really struggled that season. And and I don't know if it was like legit emotional things because of what was going on in his life, or if he just I don't know just couldn't get his act together. I don't know, but the whole season like after every game it was like what's wrong with Lamar Odom and he just never got it together three would be Rajon Rondo because he was just a terrible fit and he you know straight up quit on the team in the playoffs so those would be like the first three that I think can think of off the top of my head I'm sure if you go back a little earlier to like the Twans um they had two Antoines on the team Antoine Walker and probably those would would kind of round out that list a little bit, but I don't know if anybody can top the Odom and and Rondo. Those have those have got to be like the top two for most fans. 
I was I was I was hoping you would say that because that that's the weird thing about Dirk. Like, kind of after Finley and Nash kind of phased out a little bit, mm-hmm. they were just putting everybody. Like, they were just getting yeah. anybody they could. I was like, why do they have Antoine Walker and Antoine Jameson with yeah. Dirk? They're <laughs> yeah. all three of them play the same position. Like, why are they on the team? I don't know. But I guess was- they were like, I mean, Dirk being like a stretch four, sometimes three that can do anything. He's so good. Why not get three of him? I don't know. It just, yeah, <laughs> it didn't work. It was it was very random. Uh, Michael, you got the next one. Yes. <clears throat> Top five favorite Houston Rockets. <laughs> Okay, I didn't even think about this one because I don't care. <laughs> because the the only one I would say is Hakeem Olajuwon because he was so good that you have to respect him. But outside of that, I'm not even willing to entertain the thoughts of other great Rockets players. This That's is, this my is, answer. This is and his I'm, fault, by the way. This is, <laughs> That's my he answer, and I'm sticking to it. you up once more with this question. I, I feel that. Well, that's a... That, I was legit going to take that question off after I talked to you about it on Twitter <laughs> yesterday. And then I just realized I didn't, and Michael said it anyway. Actually, so. you know, okay, I, I, would, I would actually be okay with putting Tracy McGrady on there too because mm-hmm. he was good, and I didn't really have a problem with him in any sort of way that I do like with James Harden. Um, so I, I, would, I would do Tracy McGrady too. And, I mean, okay, we'll do Yao Ming. He seems like a nice guy. But no one else. I don't like anybody else from the Rockets. That's it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. I, I couldn't name my top five Mavs players outside of like Dirk, and I really like Luca, <laughs> and then um, uh, Popeye Jones, of course, the legend. Um, That's so random. <laughs> like, what? I don't know. I've always been a Popeye Jones fan. I saw him in like if you Google Popeye Jones, like the first like picture that pops up is like I don't know if you know what what I'm talking about, but is the goofiest looking picture. Go do that He's like, right now. <laughs> you need to. It is just just type in Popeye Jones goofy. Well, and- he is kind of a he's he's got a he has a unique face. <laughs> I think is it I I see one picture that is probably what you're talking about. He's just there's also one from it looks like it's from a video game. He's got an interesting face. He has an interesting head. You know I I like it. It's unique. It's unique. <laughs> It was. I I remember the second Popeye came in the league. I really wanted the Rock. I think the Rockets might have drafted him. I can't remember, but hmm. I think like there was some connection with the Rockets, and then we didn't get him, and he went to the Mavs. And I'm like, man, I wanted I wanted me some Popeye Jones in my life. You were the <laughs> only one that felt that way. <laughs> no Maybe other Rockets was- fan was like, man, didn't get Popeye. Right. We got we got Barkley instead, and it probably would have turned out the same. Uh, <laughs> Ouch. That was not good. Not not a fun time. But uh, especially we gave up Ori and Sam Cassell, who were like two of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. But um, okay, who are the, your top five players that retired before you were born? Ooh, okay. So I think I'm also going to include just players that maybe – played before I was aware like old enough to understand to know players and know people um and so top five favorite I'm just gonna go by like the guys that I think are the greatest I mean Jordan obviously he was around when I was a kid um but things are different like the way you watch basketball from a kid to an adult so I don't think I truly appreciated his greatness but I would say Michael Jordan um And then Hakeem, I mean, again, like we talked about this in the beginning, I think he is just so underrated. And what he did to Shaq, I mean, I know Shaq was young when they face each other, but still, like, it was just, yeah, it's like no question. Um, So Hakeem. And then I'm going to say Wilt, number three, and and that might be out of left field, but the reason I'm saying that is because I would love to see Wilt playing now i mean i i I would love to see all of those guys playing now but i would love to see will playing now because there's always like that um that question people ask of would those guys be as good now as they were back then because everyone's like you know of course will could dominate everyone was five feet tall and they had zero athleticism and all that and like that might be true but i think if you take guys like wills and 
Oscar Robertson and Bill Russell and Jerry West. And like you take all those guys and put them here. I think they would be just as good because mm-hmm. like, if you think about it just seriously, not, not like, you know, some kind of crazy, funny discussion, but if you think about it seriously, they would be in today's NBA with all of the medical advancements that we've made with all of the training advancements that we've made with the offensive schemes that we have nowadays. If you give those guys all of those benefits, I think they would be just as good. And so three, I would love to see, to see Will playing. Um, And then outside of that, and these are more just like guys that I wish I could have seen play Bob Cousy. um, So many of like what we see now was kind of started with his, his flair and his style. So I'd probably put him that's four fifth, man. I don't know. I mean, like I said, all of them, I would love to see now Jerry West. I think I would like to see him now. And I know this isn't like the list that you were asking for of guys I'd like to see now, but that's You're right. Fine, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think Jerry West, because mostly because I think I would like to see him get another ring, like to, for him to go to the finals as many times as he did. It, like, I, I just would like to see him get another ring. So probably those would be like my top five that I would like to see play, which means they'd be playing now. And I think, I think that'd be fun. Absolutely. You know, uh, the funny thing about it is like, I have, uh, have you ever heard of the, the, the Will Chamberlain archive? Yes. Yes. I relied okay. on that channel heavily for mixtape videos. So uh, I was in a, um, I was in a, a, a message board back in the day before there was really Facebook groups. And this guy was in there and like, he was really big on Wilt Chamberlain. And then like, he was like, oh, here's a video I made. And it was just randomly the guy from Wilt Chamberlain archive. And I'm like, wait, you're the dude from Wilt Chamberlain? <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, you, you've heard of it. I'm like, dude, you have, like, are, are you serious? Yeah. And uh, so I got to, I got to talk with him a lot and learn a lot from him. And um it's crazy, like, if you look at all the guys back then, because a lot of people say, oh, they were all five-foot-tall midgets and everybody was white. And, like, I mean, he played against uh, Kareem. He played against Bill Russell, Walt Thank Bellamy, uh, Willis That's what Reed, I'm saying. It's like, I Nate know it's, it's not like Wilt was by himself with a bunch of high schoolers. I mean, all <laughs> these other greats that people mentioned individually, they all played against each other with fewer teams. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Exactly. 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 It, it's a crazy argument, and I get in those I get in those debates a lot, and uh, always win, of course. But no, I mean, it's, <laughs> people people can be very stubborn about it. Uh, I, I made a joke recently. It's like uh, everybody says, "Oh well, you know," because everybody's saying that about Michael Jordan now. Believe it or not, like, oh well, Michael Jordan played against people like Jeff Hornacek, who's an unathletic white guy, and what? Um, no. I'm telling you, it's getting ridiculous to this point. And it's all because people who are LeBron fans want to tear everybody else down. And people who are Jordan fans want to tear everything now down. But anyway, I, ma- I made a joke the other day that I wanted to I wanted to uh, point out, like, everybody's like, man, Michael Jordan played against a bunch of janitors and, uh, you know, uh, milkmen and stuff like that. And I, I made a joke, I'm like, Everybody who says Michael Jordan played against a custodian, and then I put a picture of Brian Cardinal. I'm like, <laughs> LeBron literally played against that custodian and lost. And lost. So get over it, guys. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean Michael Jordan. Like, first of all, going up against John Stockton and Karl Malone, who Karl Malone, I get again, I think is underrated to a certain extent. Um, less because I think like not winning those rings. It kind of was on him a little bit. Although, I mean, God, how many rings did Jordan rob people of? Like, that's how great he was. But yeah, I mean, going against those guys, plus when he was younger, the Pistons, Magic Bird. I mean, even at, in his prime, going against Patrick Ewing and these Knicks teams and the, it's just, yeah, no, there's, there's no, there's no argument. And again, like the same thing with Jordan. People say if he was in today's league, he wouldn't be as good because he couldn't shoot or whatever. And it's like, what makes a player great is not, always tangible it's like something else in them that pushes them to be great and so yeah he might not have been a great three-point shooter because he didn't have to be if he was in today's NBA I bet he would be one of the greatest three-point shooters because that's just what he would do so I think he would still be the GOAT even if he played today absolutely Michael you got the next question yeah uh, so what can we expect from your sports media career 
looking forward? What goals do you have? Where can people find your stuff, et cetera, et cetera? Well, DallasHoopsCast.com is where I'm at now. Like I said, that just launched last November, December. So it's still pretty new. Um, we have a like a very patient growth trajectory. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm going to be at. And it is mostly, you know, all Mavs content. And again, really in depth. So like I'm on Twitter too, at underscore Sydney Myers. And that's really like Dallas Mavs talk. Like I said, I, I'm in digital marketing. So I guess if you wanted to talk about that on Twitter, you could too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all about the Mavs right now and creating that content. We have the site and the podcast, like you mentioned, um, and our YouTube channel, which mostly we, we post the podcast there too. So really just growing that and just creating really fresh Mavs content, going in depth, um, creating those awesome experiences for fans. That's what I'm focused on. Very cool. And last question. Um, lastly, what message do you have for Mavs fans after – what was that, Michael? That was a, you know, big deal. It's a big deal at the last question. Oh. Transition. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get that either, so to, yeah. It just happened. <laughs> I have no idea. Anyway, I don't know. Anyway, lastly, uh, what message do you have for Mavs fans after this season and moving forward? You know, I feel like Mavs fans seem to be pretty even keeled after this season because um, I think we all had the same idea of just getting experience in the playoffs um, and just getting experience in general. Like Luca, he's still, this was just his second season. Uh, Chris Knops, this was his first season back after his torn ACL. Um, and so I don't think we really thought anything other than like making the playoffs. I don't know if anyone really predicted it getting out of the first round. Um, so to, to me, the season went great. I mean, obviously there were ups and downs. There were some terrible losses throughout the season, but overall, I think it went pretty well. Um, they Luca showed that he's a superstar. They made it to the playoffs. They got experience. Kristaps got healthy, and then now he has an injury again. So we'll see what happens from there. But really, I think this year was just a good growing year. And next year, it can be even better. Free agency, the Mavs are big on that. So we'll see what happens next summer. Um, but yeah, to me, I think it this season was exactly what it needed to be for them to have a really good next season and end season after that. And hopefully the next 10 to 15 years with Luca. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of those guys like, it's rare, but you can really see him like multiple MVPs and yeah. champion. The sky is really the limit. And um, so uh, I'm actually interested in the Mavericks. I, I want to see them do good as long as, um, <laughs> you know, they don't. I don't know. That, that's the weird thing. Like, I, I don't like the Rockets. Like, I don't, don't like the team. I don't like the way they're put together. But I'm forced to root for them because they're my team. And I know that you probably definitely had some Mav years like that in recent years. You're like, yeah, it's. I mean, there were frustrating years. Yeah, especially towards the tail end of Dirk's career when I feel like they sort of wasted it a little bit. Um, and then before they got Luca, even Luca's first year was a little difficult with Dennis Smith Jr. Just I don't know issues with that. I don't even know why. Um, so yeah, frustrating, but not on the not on like what you're talking about with the Rockets of just not enjoying watching them. And I think that's like what makes it tough is like I think that Harden is an amazing scorer, and I think um, Russell Westbrook totally deserved his MVP. I mean, I think those are great players. Dan Tony, I think, is a great coach. I just don't enjoy watching them. I just don't enjoy the way that they play. So. Yeah, it's tough. I, I think I would have the same challenge. Yeah, it's interesting. Like, you you, you know, growing up watching uh, Hakeem and Yao Ming and then going back and watching Ralph Sampson, Moses Malone, Elvin Hayes, even we had Matumbo and, um, I mean, we had Howard, but, uh, you know, <laughs> like, and now, like, you know, here is your starting center, P.J. Tucker. You're like, <laughs> what? But, you yeah. know, I, you know that that's what we are. We are uh, – we are slaves to our fandom sometimes, and we just got to root. We got to hope. We got to believe, and I'm rooting for the Rockets this year, and I'm rooting for the Mavericks in the years to come and seeing what Luka does. Sydney, we thank you so much for being on the or Umbrella podcast. Uh, we had a great time, and we really enjoyed having you on. Thank you so much for being our guest today. 
Yeah, thanks for having me. This was this was a lot of fun. I love talking about basketball. I could do that forever. So this was awesome. Thank you. Very much. All right. What'd you say, Michael? I said you did great. We really enjoyed listening <laughs> to you. Thank you. Thanks. I hate Zoom sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. All right, all right, guys. Uh, that's it for this episode of the Aura Umbrella Podcast. Y'all take care, and we will see ya. Mm-hmm. Next time!